Hi, I'm Malini Raj and I'm an Executive Manager in the Retail Bank of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. I've been there for about a year and before that I was at Westpac. Um, I've got an investment banking background, so I started off at Citigroup and then have gradually worked in various roles through um, corporate finance, investment banking, um, retail banking and now um, yeah, I'm an Executive Manager at Sydney. I started out in the Graduate Program in Investment Banking at Citigroup. So in that I was an analyst and so we went to New York for training and then basically um, did mergers and acquisitions, IPOs, capital raisings, um, just dealing with very high profile companies. But I found that the, the experience that I was getting, I was only one small cog in a big wheel, so then I moved to um, a smaller corporate finance firm, um, Wilson HTM, and there I got more exposure to deals there mm. and then, then moving to Westpac after that, so then I got a different side, working with um, debt structuring, financing, um, more technical tax, and so I got a different exposure there, and then got the opportunity to work on the merger of Westpac and St George, so that was another opportunity which gave me different skills, and then I moved into the retail bank and change management. It was definitely boys club, but we had um, a graduate class in Sydney of um, three, three of us. And then when we went overseas for our training, um, we met a whole lot of people um, from all different countries. Um, but then when we came back, we had that network of people for support. So while we were there at like three o'clock in the morning or midnight, we could um, still have that support network and then also bounce ideas off each other and get um, examples of deals or like presentations from them. So there was that support network there. But um, I didn't, yeah, I felt supported or um, we had people. I think that um, basically being prepared to take risks and take advantage of any opportunities that um, come your way. Um, don't be narrow-minded into thinking that this is the direction you're having to go because um, for me, a lot of opportunities have opened up that um, I didn't expect that weren't on my career path. If you'd asked me 10 years ago where would I be, I would have probably said in investment banking, but that certain opportunities came up through networks or through um, just someone coming up and saying, oh, there's this opportunity, like in the um, mergers and merger of Westpac and St George, this biggest financial services merger, so it was a good opportunity to work on a high profile deal, as well as get skills that I didn't have that would help me in other, other roles, because it gave me a bigger set of transferable skills. So I guess um, you're taking advantage of opportunities and also making yourself visible in an organisation in terms of um, with senior leaders or um, making sure they understand your skill set um, so when there's roles going then they have you front of mind. Sometimes you can see what positions, so basically you just um, look at people in the organisation that you aspire to be like or um, that you want their role or look at the job description of their role and see what skills are in that role and then see where you can fill those gaps. Um, also, um, taking advantage of any opportunities that allow you to step out of your comfort zone um, that's like cross-functional, that you can get exposure to other stakeholders. Take advantage of secondments. Um, big, big corporations like Commonwealth Bank, they have a lot of secondment opportunities where you can work in another business unit, get visibility there, and see whether that suits your skill set as well. So, um, you're just taking advantage of any opportunities to get more exposure and develop your skills and then I guess you'll realise what direction you want to go. So I'm the chair of the Young Finance Professionals with Fincia, so that gives me, um, so we organise events to promote the Young Finance Professionals, um, like networking opportunities, exposure to senior leaders, so through that I've got a lot of networking um, contacts which have helped me just in terms of bouncing ideas off those people, but also um, yeah, just developing networks which is critical in the finance industry and also my leadership skills and like running a committee and that has helped me translate that into my work life. Also with the mentoring programs, um, I think it's critical for people to um, be able to bounce ideas off different and get different perspectives to see something that they haven't thought about. So in the mentoring programs, I've been doing it for about eight or nine years and I've had various mentors from students to people older than me to people in different industries but all of them have like set goals that they want to achieve whether it's getting an internship or whether it's um, figuring out what they want to do or the next step but each is different so I've had a lot of personal satisfaction setting their goals at the beginning and then trying to achieve them 
mm. and being able to inspire them and um, inspire confidence in them, which they may not have had initially starting out. I participated in the Next Generation of Corporate Female Leaders program last year and it was an amazing program. Um, it just, I have leadership aspirations for um, my career in terms of my executive career but then eventually um, getting a board position particularly because um, I'll be able to be involved in the strategy and direction of companies which you often don't get in an executive level but it would be good to be able to make a tangible difference and seeing that um, yeah, play out. Um, so that's m my ultimate aspiration. Um, so the next generation of corporate female leaders, we got to interview a lot of CEOs and see their leadership styles and um, how they got to where they got to. So we, went to, we interviewed CEOs, um, Ian Rev, um, I interviewed Anne Sherry, Carolyn Hewson, Mark Burris. So all of them have different perspectives on leadership. Um, yeah, ultimately, I would like to get on a board, so at the moment I'm just um, doing the groundwork now, um, trying to get on a non-for-profit board, so I'm involved in Starlight Foundation for Volunteering, so I've recently been appointed on the Star Ball Committee, so, and eventually start out, start out with non-for-profits and then work my way up, but also just talk to people about um, what the skills that the boards require, and then seek out to get that, and then develop my networks.